Now here at home, it's going to become illegal for shops to put cigarettes on display. The government believes that if, as in Ireland or Canada, you can't see cigarettes but have to ask for them to be dragged out from under the counter or wherever, you're less likely to buy them and smoke them. The Association of Convenience Stores is scandalised by the cost of having to build some cupboards. Cigarette companies claim there's no evidence display and design sells cigarettes, which rather invites the question of why they spend millions on them. But there could be worse to come. The government's considering making fags be sold from plain packets. As Matt Proger reports, that would really stub out something of a design tradition. What cigarette do you smoke, Doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Tobacco and the truth have never seen eye to eye. Not surprising when you're trying to flog a product which kills one person every six seconds. But what tobacco did do was spawn the modern advertising industry and the notion of the Take brand. Today's cigarette is a Bristol. Well, without question, the brand is a powerful driver for any cigarette company. Um, if you go back historically, uh, I mean, they certainly did a lot to help build some of what modern marketing and branding looks like. Effectively, at a product level, there isn't a tremendous amount of difference. Consumers can't really taste the difference between one and another, or the advertising might tell you otherwise. Um, so it's critically important to the success of those companies. Easy to forget, but until recently, tobacco advertising was the giant on the commercial landscape. Little by little, the regulatory noose has tightened. The big names have been forced into the shadows. And smoking rates have dropped correspondingly. TV commercials for cigarettes were banned in 1965. In 1971, health warnings were put on all packets. Non-television advertising campaigns were still allowed, but came under stricter guidelines in 1986. And in 2005, nearly all the remaining marketing was scrapped. Julian Grattan is an ad executive, reformed smoker, and nostalgic for the days when big tobacco meant big budgets and bigger ideas. Well, cigarette advertising is one of the reasons why we got into advertising. It was always held up as, as the kind of pinnacle of advertising creativity. And certainly when we were students, it was always one of the things that we always aimed to do because it would give you the, the opportunity to work with such creative greats as, as the film director Hugh Hudson, um, who was responsible for the influential Iguana commercial for Benson and & Hedges, and, and such adverts that you'd see within streets, such as billboards, etc., were almost becoming like street art. Um, and, and that was something, that was always a dream as an advertising creative that we wanted to work to. Selling cigarettes is, of course, all about selling a brand. And the one thing they still do have is their distinctive packaging. The gold bar of B&H, the red and white chevrons of Marlborough, and the purple sash of Silk Cut. But soon, all that will disappear. First cigarettes are going to go underneath shop counters, out of sight, and ultimately be dispatched in white, plain packaging, identikit, generic, and anonymous. For the last probably 10 plus years since all the regulations changed, the, the manufacturers have really had their hands tied. So they haven't really been, or they would say, they would argue that they haven't really been stimulating the market and that their communication and the purpose of their packaging is to allow current smokers to choose between the different brands on offer. So why doesn't the government just bite the bullet and ban cigarettes altogether? Well, the fact is, they're a money spinner. 77% of the cover price of a pack of cigarettes goes straight to the Chancellor. That's £8 billion a year, enough to fund the army and a third of the nation's hospitals. Cigarettes kill 100,000 people a year. And what do we get? £4 billion a year. <laughs> 25,000 jobs in the tobacco industry, a flourishing cigarette export business helping our balance of trade, 250,000 jobs. Related to tobacco. Thank you, Humphrey. I'm so glad to know that we still have support such as yours. <laughs> Today, Don Draper from the TV series Mad Men personifies the cigarette selling ad man of yesteryear. I could never get you to try another brand, said so my luckies. I love my old gold. So is he and his like a relic of the past? Perhaps not. 
In the past 10 years, 70 million people have started smoking, most of them in the developing world. Or as Don would phrase it, the emerging markets. Well, with us now are the advertising executive Ian Henderson and the branding consultant Jonathan Gabay. Um, supposing we mm. do go to a situation where cigarettes are sold in plain packets, what is that going to do to branding? Because there won't be any branding on the packet. Oh, I disagree. I totally disagree because there's still going to be the, the name of the brand. They've got to be the name. You've got to say, I want one brand or I want another brand. And so it goes down to the core truth of what the brand is about, which is the name. And it moves the, uh, the point of decision away from the point of sale. But Absolutely. it has to be somewhere else because you're still going to make the decision to go into a shop to buy a packet of cigarettes. The decision as to what you buy will be made somewhere else. And, and that's what advertisers will try and influence. Absolutely. And so where are they going to influence it? They're going to influence the peer groups who actually influence the people to actually smoke. So how do you do that? How do you do that? You, over to you social media. Um, yep. if, you, if you start incentivizing people to talk to each other about a particular brand mm. through Twitter feeds, through Facebook, then that is a much more powerful what form you of mean advertising. By incentivizing, if you pay them? Conceivably. Well, it, I, we don't know what the rules are yet, so yeah. we don't know whether that would be legal. Yeah, exactly. but sure. But so you get, them, you get them then talking to one another saying, I'm just relaxing with a well, Benson and Hedges or whatever Conceivably, it is. who knows. Yeah. But it's taking the point of decision away from the point of sale so that when you go into the shop, it's, it's kind of a done deal. But what that will do is actually freeze the market and it'll stop people making choices and decisions when they're actually buying. But it's still amazing, isn't it? Because really, mm. there's nothing much to tell between one cigarette and another. It's between you know, a gitan ah, well, and, and, and a silk <laughs> cut or something. But by and large, most of them are in the same area. No, well, this is where I, I believe it's actually going to be good for the brand because what's going to happen, it's going to go back to the product. It's not what's just on the outside of the box, it's what's inside the box. And indeed, if we're talking about uh, the brands trying to influence people to start smoking, which I'm not saying that they are, but if they are trying to do that in terms of teenagers, then what does a, te look, what does a teenager do? You tell them you mustn't do something, they're going to do it more. Oh, so sure. if, so I've if already you're tried this idea out in a teenager <laughs> this evening, my daughter had she said, that's really stupid, Dad. It just makes you want it more if it's in... It, if and there you have sell. it. And, that, and, that's, and that's the proof of the whole thing. It's, you see, in the old days, it used to yeah. be about changing behaviour with mass advertising. Now it's much more subtle. It's about looking at the psyche of the consumer. And this is part of a process of sort of uh, ostracising smoking, yeah. isn't it? I mean, people smoking in office doorways, putting it under the counter, making it socially unacceptable. That's really quite attractive to some but people who want to be... Socially unacceptable is socially acceptable well, in some course, quarters. Yes, but, but, exactly. But yeah. that is... Look, we're living in an era of austerity. We're living in a nanny state where they could see it, the uh, young smoker could see it as that way. So if they're going to see it as an era of austerity and as a nanny state, so what they're going to do is rebel against it and say, Gosh, and you're even putting up a blank packet. So, you know, I want to actually have something because I want to have it because my peer group says that mm. it's cool or whatever it might be, and then take it from that point of view. There's huge potential for unintended consequences as well because mm. if, if you go into a shop and say, I just want a packet of cigarettes, then the shopkeeper might say, well, what do you want? I'll, I'll have the cheapest. So you might get a price-cutting war which might result in more cigarettes being sold. Hmm? You know, it, it's quite interesting to see what will happen. And yeah. from the perspective that you guys look at it yeah. as, um, what should we say, professionals in this field, I mean, is this, is this an end to the, to the money that's going to be made out or has been made out of tobacco? It'll move it elsewhere. I mean, I, I, you know, over time, I think this, this yeah. ostracism, you know, there are, there, smoking is declining. We know it yeah. is. Yeah. And it, over time, it will decline. But there's still an awful lot of money to be made, as we saw from the clip. Um, and that will just go elsewhere. It'll go into social media. It'll go into word of mouth. It'll go into PR. events and sponsorship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, look, in the old days, people <coughs> took their... Look, people don't l look at leaders as they used to look at leaders, whether it's going to be politicians or whether it's going to be brands or whoever or whatever it's going to be. And so what they're going to do is that they're going to look at a different type of a leader. For example, there was... Kate Moss was in the news uh, uh, this evening, and she was smoking. Yeah, no, there's a picture on front, tomorrow morning's front page of The Times. There she, there, and there, there she, she is. is. And yeah, there yeah, she's smoking, got a fag in her... In, in her, in her between her fingers. National No Smoking Day. And, I but, that, but don't you understand? Bad. That is exactly yeah. why it makes it so powerful because yeah. this is the new psychology of advertising yeah. this is where we're going today it's an easy so, piece of rebellion sorry it's an easy piece of rebellion 
Absolutely. It's, it's a way of asserting your individuality, which yeah. is outside society, and that's, it's, that's attractive. The individual 